I always thought that Greek and Roman mythology was cool. Like many people, I went through a phase in middle school where I was absolutely obsessed with it before, you know, mellowing out in high school and just becoming obsessed with collecting retro video games. But also in that time, the good folks over at Mega Cat Studios decide what if they made a puzzle game for the NES that was heavily influenced by Greek mythology. And thus, we got Little Medusa. I remember hearing a bit about this title when it first came out and I thought it looked cool, but I admittedly never gave it a shot myself. However, now Little Medusa is coming out for both the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo, and the folks over at Mega Cat were kind enough to send us not one, but two review copies of the game. So I'm James and I'm going to be looking at the Sega Genesis version of Little Medusa. And I'm the Golden Bolt and I'll be taking a look at the Super Nintendo version of Little Medusa two versions of the same game, and we're going to help you decide if they're worth your time or not, which one is better, and most importantly, if they're fun. Welcome to Stuff We Play, and now with two nerdy guys on the internet talking about video games. If that's the most original thing you've ever heard, you should probably subscribe. So today, we're taking a look at Little Medusa, that Greek mythology-inspired puzzle game for the Sega Genesis. And the Super Nintendo, don't forget about the SNES. With that, let's dive right in. So upon booting up the game, we're with a pretty cool looking title screen. That also creeps me out a bit. What's impressive here though, is the clarity of the music. Not the music itself, I should mention. I admit that most of the music here throughout either version doesn't stand out, but the actual sample quality here does, especially for the Sega Genesis. Moving on to the sprite work though, things get a bit more interesting. Well, in cutscenes anyway. During the actual stages, it's pretty obvious that this is just a redrawn NES game. It's basic, though I don't think things clash at all and everything stands out well enough. However, the cutscenes here are a different matter entirely. The game features two modes, regular and Olympian, with regular being a story mode in which Little Medusa embarks to save Olympus from some sort of big bad. Let's be real, it's probably Zeus. If you know anything about Greco-Roman mythology, it's always Zeus. He is always the bad guy, pretty much no matter what. In the cutscenes, she interacts with each boss character, and all of them do seem to come to life a little bit with their portrayals here. Yeah, little Medusa herself does look a little bit creepy, but that's kind of the point. She can literally turn people to stone. What else do you want? Perhaps my favorite bit of artwork here is the game over screen. It's so large and ominous and kind of gives me a Zelda 2 vibe, what with the shades of purple and especially that eerie music in the background whenever you hit it. I know it's a game over screen, but still, credit where credit is due and I'd love to have this as a poster or something. Where things do slip up a bit is in the gameplay. On paper, Little Medusa is a simple game where you can turn enemies into stone and push them into water to create platforms. You can also create columns of stone either to protect yourself or steer where the immobilized enemies are pushed. However, the game does not give you any indication that this is your goal when you start playing. Now, of course, for a new release in a retro system, I'd expect controls to be explained the old-fashioned way, and that's via the instruction booklet that comes with all physical copies of the game. But we don't have that manual on hand, digitally or otherwise, and the only other release that I own from Mega Cat, Coffee Crisis, has a manual that does not explain instructions. This means that your first few minutes playing Little Medusa will be spent fumbling around with the controls trying to figure out how to do anything. Yes, that's only a few minutes lost, but also, first impressions are everything, and I don't want someone mistaking this game as overly cryptic just because of a confusing first impression. So once you come to grips with both the controls and your objective as Little Medusa herself, the game does pick up a bit. Immobilizing enemies is quite satisfying, and some of the puzzles really will make you use your head. This one, the first world in particular, made me have to sit down and think about it for a bit. But when I finally did solve it, I felt extremely satisfied. Like with any good puzzle game, Little Medusa makes you feel good about your work whenever you triumph against a puzzle, even if your reward, quote unquote, is just another puzzle or perhaps even a boss fight followed by a cutscene. Speaking of those boss fights, these were definitely the highlight for me. They're still pretty simple, immobilize some enemies that spawn and toss them into the boss, but once again, the game makes you feel rewarded whenever you defeat them by treating you to a satisfying explosion, and also a cutscene afterwards if you're playing the story mode. 
One more cool thing I do want to mention is that this game also seems to have achievements, which is really cool to see on an old console like the Genesis, the SNES, or even the original NES version. They're all pretty simple achievements, but I hope this means that we're going to have a Steam version of this game on the way at some point that includes Steam achievements. And that's pretty much it. Little Medusa is a simple game that's addicting in its own way. While perhaps not as grandiose as some of Mega Cat's other titles, such as the excellent Coffee Crisis, it's still an interesting game that's perhaps worth your time. Interestingly enough, the SNES and Genesis versions of the game are virtually identical. There's no slowdown issues or any real picture or audio quality differences between these two. So it mainly comes down to, do you prefer the Super Nintendo or the Genesis? Which controller feels better for you? And which system would you rather buy a new game for? In addition to this, the same extra goodies come with the NES, SNES, and Genesis versions of Little Medusa, and they all cost the same price. And here comes the part that people hate to hear about, the price. With your purchase, you get the game itself inside a really cool colored cartridge, such as this solid white NES cart, along with a high quality box done in the style of the boxes from that console at the time, and a nice glossy manual. The overall cost for this package is 50 US dollars. If you're on the fence about trying this game and feel like it's something that you may enjoy, you can download a free One World demo for your platform of choice from the Mega Cat Studios website. Try it before you buy it, and if you enjoy it, then definitely pick up this new title for your old retro systems. But you know what? I maybe begin to ramble on a bit. What's your favorite homebrew release for a retro system? Let me know down in the comment section below. And while you're at it, why don't you subscribe to Stuff for Play for more great content like this, or even check out Bolt. As always, thank you for having me on, James. It's always a blast. And if you guys want to see another video that James and I did together over on my channel that just came out right now, go check out our review of what I would say is the single greatest horror game ever made, Alien Isolation. So remember, definitely check him out and potentially even back us on Patreon, or if you have some time to spare, why not check out this review of Alien Isolation we did over on Bolt's channel. It's absolutely stone cold, and you'll understand that joke if you see that video. So with that, thank you very much for watching. Stay classy, and I'll see you next time.